The U.N. is brokering a deal to secure Syria's chemical weapons that we know. Uh, the plan calls for the Assad regime to either remove or destroy its arsenal of sarin gas and other chemical weapons by the middle of next year. Joining us is Stephen Yates, former deputy assistant to Vice President Dick Cheney for National Security Affairs and the CEO of D.C. International Advisory. Stephen, good of you to join us this afternoon. Uh, let's get right to the question. Is the U.N. deal a bridge to peace or is it a bridge to nowhere? Uh, can Assad continue to use chemical weapons and get away with it? Well, Kelly, I think when we face these kinds of arms control agreements, you have to look at whether they're going to be complete irreversible, verifiable, and whether the actual capabilities are destroyed uh, and the ability to remake them are destroyed. And I think when we look at how this deal came into being and the fact that there's limited enforcement, that there was an early warning where things could have been hidden or removed temporarily and put back in place, we have to worry a little bit about this being complete and irreversible at the very least. Yeah, that's a legitimate concern that a, quite a few people in the community, security community, has about this. Everyone seems to be focused, however, on what's being done about the chemical weapons. And while that is a good thing, no one should forget, Stephen, that Assad still has the power to inflict more atrocities against his own people with his military forces, which have already killed more than 100,000 people. So did we get a good deal out of this? Well, I think that's actually a very, very important point that it gets too, too lost in the focus on one set of weapons that the Assad regime and its allies are able to deploy. This conflict in Syria will remain ongoing. This will not resolve the civil war. It also will not re resolve the issue of foreign intervention there, where you basically have an alliance of Russian capabilities, Iran, Hezbollah, and others engaging in continued aggression there aimed at shaping the region. So the president really hasn't addressed any of those challenges with this specific focus on chemical weapons, and we have doubts about the effort on chemical weapons alone. And, and, you know, when you look at this whole entire Syrian regime, it says it's cracking down on so-called terrorists. But, but what about the attacks on Christians living in the area, the destruction of uh, historic churches and uh, the human rights and violations and abuses of other citizens in Syria? How are they considered terrorists? Right. That's a very, very important consideration, too, that it's been lost in a lot of the narrative about the Arab Spring where we've focused a lot about Sunni Shia competition and changes in governance in the region, uh, but there are religious and other minorities that have, are having their rights and their, and their livelihoods affected in the, by this in terrible, terrible ways. Uh, the House of Representatives recently passed a bill to create a special envoy to try to address these kinds of issues. I think that's a nice, modest step in the right direction, but really the only thing that will help is if there's greater, transparent, more accountable government there in that region, uh, and that the Islamists who want to marry of a, an interpretation of Islam in the state are pushed back. So what do you think is going to happen in the future, Stephen? Well, I'm concerned that this basically buys time for Assad and that the status quo in Syria and the broader region continues unabated while we, be, we remain largely distracted by a U.N. process of verification, which we've learned from other challenges like Iraq and elsewhere, can go on for a long time without addressing these other issues. And, you know, some would take that to mean that Assad actually won in all of this deal-making. Uh, Stephen Yates, we thank you for sharing and weighing in on this important matter. Good day. Thank to you, Kelly. Well, our economy is...